Hey folks, Yak here. Today I am going to share with you a recent tendril kill that we had. Um, I have moved guilds recently, so I'm now with Twitch Prime. Um, and it's been a little interesting uh, doing tendril after they had already killed it multiple times. This is now, I think, my third time killing tendril, so I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with it. But figured it would be a good opportunity to kind of do something similar to the uh, Smolder on video where I walked through you know, the fight itself and rotation and, you know, decision making as I go through it uh, from a warlock perspective, playing demo here, uh, figure the first thing I should do is, especially with this fight, is go through some of the talent choices here. So a couple things to note with talents for this fight, pretty different uh, versus any of the other fights that you'd be playing demo on in this raid. Um, the biggest things here is that we take Bile Scourge Bombers. Shadow Invocation, and Guillotine. These are talents that you're generally not taking uh, on any other bosses, but are very important for doing root damage, which is one of the biggest goals for this build. Obviously, we're taking Implosion and then two points into Imp, imp Gang Boss. Um, so your, your boss damage is not the best here, but everyone lives if they get taken out of those roots quickly enough. So that is what the goal for this build is. Um, it's worth noting, I do like to run one point into Fel Synergy because there's a lot of damage. It just helps happens throughout the fight, and this helps a decent amount with keeping yourself topped up. Um, and then Icar of Devils, which I actually don't think I was running on my kill just because I had forgotten to uh, change to this talent for this particular loadout. Uh, but if you're running Blue Silk and Lining because you do a lot of M+, um, this is a great talent to take because it helps keep your uptime high. And you, you generally don't need the shorter cooldown on this fight. From a gearing perspective, there really isn't anything that stands out too much. It's pretty much the same gear that you would be running on any other fight. Fairly standard uh, demo gearing. Uh, you can see I'm running Baylor and Naimus. Um, I am running the Dreambender staff mostly because it sims ahead of um, the Irrital staff for me. Uh, and I just don't have access to a 489 Irrital staff. If I did, I would probably be using that. But yeah, so this is pretty standard. You can see the, the stats that I have here. Obviously, this is with me having no buffs at all. On this fight, I generally run Tepid Verse, so my versatility goes up a little bit. But, you know, of course, these are not stats that you should be aiming for. You want to always sim yourself as you're getting gear to figure out what is going to be the best for you. No, he doesn't. Yeah. So jumping into the fight, uh, you'll note that we put our portals off to the side here at the beginning because uh, you don't need them immediately and it can help you save the global later on as you're going into the second set of seeds. Uh, for your opener here, it's a little bit different than your standard. You want to go from your precasted Shadow Bolt directly into Grimoire um, because then you can cast your Baylor immediately afterwards since it doesn't have doesn't uh, get on the global. I do also activate Burning Rush before the fight starts to help get away a little bit quicker and you pretty much go immediately into a Dark Pack to uh, help mitigate some damage. Um, this whole early phase is a little tricky because you have to maximize your Hodge casts um, which I'm still working on from a timing perspective, as well as getting your Nymu's Trinket going. And that all overlaps here with the Dispels. Fortunately on this one, I didn't get the Dispel, so I was able to quickly move in, get the Bombers down, get the Guillotine place, and immediately implode. Try and get your Doom Brands on any of the remaining Treants, which will help damage overall. And then here you generally want to use a um, soul burn portal so that you don't get rooted. Just helps with movement and less damage on the group. It's also good to activate a defensive there. Um, generally unending resolve for the damage overlap. And here I think I get pretty lucky in this pull in general with uh, dispels. Makes it easier for stacking up. Just be aware of your third or fourth dispel, which you generally aren't as warlock, and you might need to call for something like freedom. And there I should have taken the gateway, but uh, I tried on one of our previous pulls and it wasn't quite on top of the gateway and I got myself killed, so I was a little gun shy and just ran out. And I could have probably positioned better to get on the feather right away. Like I said, I'm still still pretty fresh on this fight in general, still kind of getting to the, getting uh, working on my rhythm across it.
And then here I've been working on timing. Right, uh, this fight and this evening when I was going through this, uh, this tendril kill, I was delaying Tyrant cast a little bit to try and make sure that I had plenty of imps going into the first set of roots. I think in future ones, I'd probably just open up with an earlier um, Felguard and then just still go through the Tyrant uh, without going through a, a second set of dogs, but then just end up casting it late. Versus casting dogs first and waiting for a second set of dogs before going into Tyrant. I think that that would probably end up timing out better. Um, But it still worked out pretty well there as far as having a decent amount of imps going into that. Always be looking for soaks until they are completely gone. No point in doing damage until you know that the soaks are uh, taken care of, especially if you have something available. I think the I think TP generally has like a areas where they have people assigned for the soaks, but I, I came in after they made those assignments, so I don't really have one. Just try and look for one, cover them. And there I could have gotten my bombers uh, and guillotine placed down a little bit earlier. Or I think just bombers because guillotine just came up. But it's pretty hard to get it timed out correctly. And making sure all the seeds are good before going back. I got clipped by an orb there. Supernova. And you'll note that our general positioning strategy for the um, dropping the dispels is kind of like dropping them behind us a little bit and then just working forward across the platform. So there's really never a ton of movement, um, which allows for a, a pretty good DPS uptime. Here we just move back a little bit. Make sure we have enough space on the platform as we work across it. Here I could have placed uh, bombers and guillotine earlier. Spent a little bit of time trying to move and figure out my positioning. I also had uh, my Naimu trinket available for a little while here, and I probably could have sent it earlier, but I was getting. I have the least amount of experience with this uh, third platform, so I was still trying to figure out the timing on all of it. Yeah, I use my Naimu here. I probably should have activated my pot. I'm not sure if we had specific timing for the second rounds of pots here. But I'm just taking advantage of my Naimu buff with it. They should both overlap here. Suppressive Ember, flaming germination. Mass entanglement. The seeds are taken care of. I'm not sure why I got why I got freedom here, but it worked out. That overlap is a little tricky, especially if you're third. You can see Prey in the back there on his druid in bear form, trying to run out. Third dispel is a little tricky. I think I died on one of our pulls as third dispel. Sometimes it's your fault, sometimes it's dispel's not happening quickly enough, so it's a little awkward, just need to make sure you have a way out. Could have gotten guillotine down here a bit earlier. Soaks get taken care of. Uh, and then here, just basically squeezing out the last tyrant. I probably just should have imploded here immediately and got the Baylors going immediately. Um, but I mean, it didn't really matter. The boss is dead. Would have just been getting the last little bits of damage out. But overall, it was a good pull. Finally got Baylors for our other Warlock after I stole one of the earlier ones from him. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, link them down below. Um, obviously, if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe. 
check us out um, often streaming either Braid or the keys that we do on Twitch TV slash Yakaroo. And have a good night.